السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Nadine Burhan from General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control. Our lecture today is going to be General Glands to Candida Oris. Regarding the objectives of this lecture, we are going to have a background regarding a Candida Oris, risk factors, transmission, clinical manifestations, case definition and classification, laboratory diagnosis, reporting of confirmed cases, treatment, preliminary investigation, contact tracing, and screening. As a background, Candida oris is an emerging fungus that presents a serious global health issue, as it was first reported in Japan in 2009. It's resistant to multiple antifungal drugs commonly used to treat Candida infections. It identified as one of Candida species that has been associated with infection and outbreaks in healthcare facilities in various countries. Clinically, Candida oris is capable of causing serious invasive fungal infections such as candidemia, pericarditis, osteomyelitis, pneumonia, and urinary tract infections. Patients can carry Candida oris somewhere on the body but not have an infection or any symptoms. This is called colonization. Colonized patients are at increased risk of developing infection. Only three classes of antifungal drugs are available to treat severe candida infections, azoles, echinocandins, and infotracin B. It can cause severe illnesses among patients with immunocompromising conditions or those receiving high acuity care. For risk factors, candida oris infections have been found in patients of all ages from preterm infant to uh, the elderly, with the following risk factors. Prolonged critical care areas like ICUs, NICUs, PICUs, or dialysis center stay, or prolonged hospital stay. Also, patient with carbapenem resistance enterobacteriaceae, positive patient, either infected or colonized, can be under a risk of uh, candida oris infection current or active outbreak in the healthcare facility. An indwelling medical device such as central venous catheter, urinary catheter, biliary catheter or wound drain, an impaired immune system like recent surgery or diabetes, prolonged use or misuse of broad spectrum antibiotics or antifungal drugs can also be risk factors. Regarding transmission, Candida oris is transmissible whether a patient has Candida oris infection or colonization. Thus, infection prevention and control precautions are the same for patients with Candida oris infection or colonization. Implementation of these practices started or starts with the identification of cases, typically Candida oris spread in hospitals and other healthcare facilities through contact with contaminated surfaces or equipment. It can also be spread from person to person. Due to that, cases infected or colonized with Candida oris can shed the, the fungus. For case identification, to contain Candida oris transmission, it is critical to perform timely identification, detection, and accordingly, implementation of appropriate infection prevention and control measures. For clinical manifestations, colonization with Candida oris is asymptomatic. Colonization is generally on the skin, nares, and other external body sites. However, the symptoms that appeared on the infected cases are as the following, fever, chills, sweats, and maybe the patient had a low blood pressure. Infections have been found in all patients of all ages, as we mentioned before, from preterm infant to the elderly. Case definition and classification. Cases described either as a suspected case, which is a person with a non-candida albicans species isolated from a diagnostic or screening specimen or confirmed case which is a person with a candida oris isolated from a diagnostic or screening specimen irrespective of phenotypic susceptibility. A confirmed candida oris case can be defined as the following. A. Clinical confirmed candida oris case 
which is a person with a confirmatory laboratory evidence from a clinical specimen collected for the purpose of diagnosing or treating disease in the normal course of care. This includes specimens, sites reflecting invasive infection like blood or cerebrospinal fluid, and specimens from non-invasive sites such as wound, urine, and respiratory tract. This does not include swabs collected for screening purposes. B. Screening confirmed Candida auris case, which is a person with a confirmatory laboratory evidence from a swab collected for the purpose of screening for Candida auris colonization, regardless of site swabbed. Typically, screening specimen sites are the skin like axilla, groin, nares, rectum, or other external body sites. Laboratory diagnosis. Detection of Candida auris requires blood tests as well as those of other bodily fluids. Detecting these pathogens is challenging as it is very similar to others of the same family and can be misdiagnosed. A quick diagnosis is rarely possible. Laboratory diagnosis via culture is the way to diagnose Candida auris infection or colonization. Molecular methods can identify Candida auris. Clinicians and laboratories should be aware of the possibility of Candida auris, especially in high-risk patients who have cultured non-albicans Candida species. Like other Candida infections, Candida auris infection are usually diagnosed by culture of blood or other body fluids, such as urine, or respiratory secretions. However, candida auris is harder to accurately identify in the laboratory than other more common types of candida using conventional commercial systems and can be confused with other more commonly encountered candida species. So, all invasive isolates should undergo antifungal susceptibility testing. Regarding laboratory diagnosis, the following aspects in regard of specimen processing must be considered. Candida auris grows on blood agar as all other candida species, but for subculturing use Soborod's agar. Growth at 40 to 42 Celsius is useful to differentiate it from many other candida species. Chrome agar is widely used as a differentiation medium. Candida auris appear pale, purple, or pink colonies, microscopically is indistinguishable from other candida species, but it is germ tube negative budding yeast. It is commonly misidentified with other yeast, especially candida hemolini, in the following identification system. Safety considerations for laboratory diagnosis of candida auris use biological safety cabinet BSL2 or biosafety level 2 when manipulating known or suspected candida auris isolates. Candida auris can contaminate surfaces extensively and it's difficult to eradicate. MOH approved high level environmental disinfectants should be used for cleaning the work area with a consideration of manufacturer recommendation to avoid equipment damage. Reporting of confirmed cases, the microbiology laboratory should notify the following upon identification. A. Nurse in charge of the ward or unit where the patient was admitted. B. Infection prevention and control department. C. Treating physician. While infection prevention and control department should notify the following, any confirmed cases of candida auris should be reported to the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control, GDIPC, through the National Approved Electronic Platform. And all reports should be generated within 48 hours of identification through GDIPC Healthcare Associated Infections, HAI's Outbreak Notification Electronic Platform. For treatment, first-line therapy should be prescribed based on the specific susceptibility testing, which should be undertaken as soon as possible. However, there is evidence that 
the resistance can evolve quite rapidly in this species. The selection of antifungal must be based on a case-by-case -case basis and depending on the site of infections as well as the infectious disease and the treating physician's recommendation. Preliminary investigation. Every identified case of Candida auris, regardless of the degree of antimicrobial resistance, requires immediate investigation to determine the probable source of Candida auris and to assess the risk of transmission within the healthcare facility. Risk factors for Candida auris acquisition should be identified for any patient who tests positive for Candida auris. Microbiology record should be reviewed if possible to determine if the patient has or had a previous isolate positive for Candida hemolini or other non-albicans Candida that may have been misidentified. Contact tracing. Contact defines as an individual who is exposed to a case colonized or infected with Candida auris in a manner that might allow transmission to occur, or an individual who is exposed to Candida auris contaminated environment where there is an increased risk of acquisition of Candida auris. Healthcare facilities should strongly consider performing more extensive screening if there is evidence or suspicion of ongoing transmission in a healthcare facility. For example, Candida auris detected from multiple patients through contact screening or clinical cultures, or increase in infections from unidentified Candida species. Contact investigation will consist of screening and identifying high-risk contacts for candida acquisition. In contact tracing, there are two categories of contact, a room contact and a ward contact, and it is very important to differentiate between them. Room contact is a person who resided for 24 hours or more in a healthcare facility in a shared room with a confirmed case during the case's period of transmission risk, while ward contact is any person who has been on a ward for 24 hours or more in the time that the ward has been designated as a transmission risk area or TRA. Now we are going to talk about very important aspect, which is screening. Screening defined as a process to identify patients at risk for being colonized with antibiotic resistance organism, and if a risk factor are identified, obtaining appropriate specimen. Screening patient and healthcare workers to identify candida auris colonization is very important practice for avoiding transmission of the microorganism. The healthcare facility should construct an internal screening policy after risk assessment. Screening is recommended in departments that are experiencing outbreaks or having an increase in number of ongoing cases and or a colonization. In all cases, in the four weeks prior to diagnosis of the index patient, healthcare facility should look back to see if there has been an increase in detection of candida in the same intensive care setting or ward, as this may represent unrecognized transmission. Healthcare departments and healthcare facilities should consider performing more extensive screening to detect ongoing transmission, such as a point prevalence survey, if there is an evidence or suspicion of ongoing transmission in the facility. For example, candida auris detected from a multiple patient through contact screening or clinical culture increase in inf infection from unidentified candida species. If the index patient was not isolated, patients who have close contacts in the same bay with an infected patient in the 48 hours prior to the first identification should be isolated and cared for with an enhanced infection prevention and control measures as detailed later. Screening is advised for patients coming for other affected hospitals or a long-term facility. 
While waiting for screening results, healthcare facility could consider placing patient at high risk of candida oris colonization on appropriate transmission-based precaution. Suggested screening sites that colonize the skin and mucosal surfaces, like genitourinary tract, gastrointestinal tract, mouth and respiratory tract, are groin and axilla, urine, nose and throat, perineal swab, rectal swab or stool sample. Other sites that may be considered if clinically indicated are sputum or endotracheal secretions, drain fluid from abdominal, pelvic or mediastinal fluid, cannula entry sites or wounds. Reassessment of colonization. CDC or Center for Disease Control does not recommend routine reassessment for a candida oris colonization. However, long-term follow-up of colonized patients in healthcare facility, especially those patients who continue to require complex medical care, such as ventilator support, suggest colonization persistence for a prolonged period of time. Those are our reference in this lecture. And finally, thank you for joining us.